Sally, we just wrapped up the Rudy's Real Texas Barbecue Volleyball State Championships. How did it go? It went great. Um, you know, to see those athletes competing, um, even though they're mask wearing, you know that they're smiling and enjoying the moment. So it was a fantastic event, great volleyball, and just very good sportsmanship. It wasn't for a blue trophy, but this was the first time football had some sort of spotlight event in one location with all classes represented. Is this something that will be considered for a football state championship culminating event in the future? I don't think anybody needs to look into that. I think a lot of people are thinking, is this the way we're going to go? You know, we made that decision based on COVID. And the University of New Mexico, they stepped up in all sports in order to us to be able to use the facilities and give these kids the best experience possible. Will we look at it? Sure, we'll look at it. Um, but again, any decision like that is going to be talked about amongst all the member schools and the board of directors. So it's not going to be a quick decision that that is what we are going to do in the future. Seating and selection for state soccer took place this past weekend. How did you determine the field in each class and who got in and who didn't? And I think going back, that is one thing that I think mostly parents need to understand because we do communicate with the coaches and the athletic directors. And even in our videos, we've talked about how is teams going to qualify for state. And first and foremost, the problem that we're having this year is that the field has been shrunk in half. And then we're using our criteria points so we do not have as much data for max preps or overall records. And, and so things are a little bit different. However, this is what the board of directors and our member schools voted on, is that we will go to eight team brackets. And in soccer, it was four teams in A through AAA. And the district champions automatically qualify. Well, we get a lot of questions. Well, we have two team districts and four team districts and five team districts. You know, we cannot penalize anybody because they have to play in their region only. So, for example, in 5A with Farmington and PV up in the Northwest, they don't have any other 5A schools to compete against. So we cannot penalize them for that because that is from the governor's orders. And so when we do the field, the district champions automatically qualify. That could be four, five, six out of the eight teams that are qualifying. So there are not many teams that we can select into the field. And when we do select them into the field, we use the six criteria points. With that being said, there are going to be some teams that probably are quote unquote deserving or maybe better than the district champions in other districts that are not able to be in the field. But like I have been saying before, this is not ideal and we need to go back and look that the kids were able to have a season, they were able to participate, and now we are able to have a culminating event. There's still a couple weeks until seating and selection for state basketball. How will those brackets be determined? It's going to be the same way. You know, the brackets are eight teams. District champions automatically qualify, and we will do the seating and selection with the six criteria points. Once again, when those come out, I'm sure there's some teams that are probably one of the top eight in the state that will not make the field. But what we need to go back then and remember, everybody just wanted, let's just play. It's not about the blue trophy. We need to go back and think is about the social, emotional well-being of our students. And we are playing again, and that's what needs to be focused on. Lastly, state cross country is in the books. State volleyball is complete. State soccer is this week. Basketball is getting underway. Are we back to normal? Is COVID behind us? It is not. And, and you know, you just said that, and I'm chuckling a little bit because, yes, it's all on top of each other. And, in fact, this week... We have fall sports because we still have soccer. We have winter sports and our spring sports are starting. So this week in the calendar, every single season has begun. Now, is it normal? No, it's not. And that is one thing that I'm gonna have meetings with our coaches and our athletic directors is we need to make sure that we realize we still have a pandemic. We still have COVID-19. So therefore, we still need to do all the protocols that were handed down by the governor's office to keep these kids safe. Everybody wants it to be normal and let's go see everybody play and let's not sanitize and forget these masks and we can travel all over the state. But that's not it. We need to go back and remember that we've got to follow the governor's orders. We have to mask wear. 
we have to social distance, and for indoor sports, we need to get those counties from um, yellow to green and turquoise so that they can, parents can watch their kids participate. And once again, we have a start. We are in COVID-19, we're still in a pandemic, so we need to follow all the criteria so that we can have a finish.